Is nitrogen holding you back from higher yields? Well, you need to find out right now. And when we think about applications later in the season, there are some good ways to determine, starting with pre-side dress nitrate tests. Yeah, so this is just one of the things that we would absolutely encourage you to do. Yes, you can do tissue sampling, and yes, you can do your soil sampling before the start of the year, and all that stuff is great. But what we really like is a soil test at this time of year. We call it a pre-side dress nitrate test. It's very inexpensive. A lot of labs are only gonna charge you five bucks. But we would like you to do this down at least to 12 inches, maybe even to 24 inches. The reason why you wanna do it is because you need to find out not just what's in your plant today, but what's going to be there over the course of the next couple, three months. If you have enough nitrogen to make it to the end of the season, that's fantastic. You don't have to put more on, but if you look at your test and you go, oh, I do not have a lot of pounds here based on what my yield expectation is, then you know you have a much better chance of having a good return on investment when you put more nitrogen on. If you find out that you are a little short of nitrogen, there are many different methods to put that nitrogen on and lots of different nitrogen sources that you may choose from. The big thing is you want to minimize any loss. If you're going to invest the money in nitrogen, you want to make sure as much of that as possible gets into your crop. Yeah, but the good news here is, you know, a lot of people will talk about, hey, a stabilizer is super worth it if you're putting it on in the fall or if you're putting on a high rate in the spring. But right in the middle of the season, the stabilizer may not pay as well because the odds are pretty high that as soon as you put that nitrogen on it's going to get used up. Now the one stabilizer I might consider if it was me is something that's going to prevent volatility. In other words if I put the nitrogen on the surface of the soil and I don't get rain, I don't rain it in sometime very soon with urea it's a couple days with liquid 28 percent about a week or so, if I'm not going to do that throwing a stabilizer with it could make a whole lot of sense. Now, Darren mentioned there are a lot of different forms of nitrogen. We commonly will talk about the liquid, like 28 or 32 percent. We'll talk urea or some form of dry. And then also there is anhydrous that you could run out there. Now, you could do some foliar feeding too. It's just when you're foliar, you can't put a lot over the top of the crop liquid. So we'll probably talk about right now putting higher rates right on the soil. Well, certainly figuring out the rate is going to be important and then the timing as well when you're looking at i want to have good availability throughout the rest of the season how long will that pre hold out that's kind of what that pre side dress nitrate test is telling you that's why we feel that's really critical so you can see where you're at right now and if you figure out you know i've got another week or two that i could hold this off and i could still make it through the crop that might be good especially in lighter soils that can only hold so much nitrogen we often use a 10 times the cation exchange capacity for that soil as a rule for how much nitrogen you can hold at any one time. Like Brian said, if you've got an actively growing crop, you may be able to push it just a little past that, especially if you're in that rapid growth stage. But still, you can time out that nitrogen application and know when you actually need it by doing those tests. All right, getting back to the forms of nitrogen you can use, I would say I'm not real big on anhydrous at side dress time. I worry a lot about burning roots. I worry a lot about burning plants. Obviously, there's the safety factor in applying it. And quite frankly, a lot of retailers have stopped carrying anhydrous just because the insurance costs are so high. So usually we're talking about the other two forms. It's urea or liquid like 28 or 32 percent. With urea, my concern, a lot of people will top dress. They'll throw it over the top of the crop. I don't love that because sometimes you can get a lot in the whirl, especially if it's wet. So if you're going to throw urea over the top, do it when the plant is very dry, then usually the urea will run off or at least more of it will, will go off of the plant. But you always have that concern about how much ends up in the whirl. I don't like that, so we don't put urea on ours. What we will do is we'll put liquid out there. Yes, we've done it where we inject it. We've injected it with coulters, shovels, a lot of different ways. But anymore, and especially to get it over to get over the field quickly, we'll typically drag hoses, we'll use a wide drop or something like that. So in terms of that placement, where we have done a Y drop type system, it could be something else too. But the point is, if we can get it closer to the row, you got to think about how the crops roots grow. That corn plant has more roots near the surface of the soil, usually in or right next to the row, not in the middle of the row. So ideally, if I'm going to lay something on the surface of the soil, I'd like it a little bit closer to the plant rather than in the middle of the row.
Nitrogen may be a yield limiting factor in your fields right now. That's why we encourage you to do some pre-side dress nitrate tests. They're very inexpensive soil tests to run. You can also confirm it with plant tissue analysis and then get the right form of nitrogen out there at the right rate as well. It doesn't seem to matter if you're short or long on nitrogen. It seems like we're always fighting our weed of the week. We'll talk about how to control this tough weed coming up later in the show.